I can't compete with Maria. Come on now. Live. Are we live? Double check. We should be live. Yes, you're live. All right, here we go. Guys, what's up? This is Gabe with Vertical House Buyers and the North Houston Real Estate Investors. Um, just wanted to see what's up. Tonight is the networking night. We're going live with AG. Have a lot of cool stuff to share with you guys tonight. Uh, AG has a ton of great information to share with you guys tonight. Um, so I will say this multiple times. If you guys have questions, if you guys have comments, uh, please share, like it, uh, join the group, the North Houston Real Estate Investors group. There should be a tag on here. Um, and uh, we'll get going on uh, this whole night. So this is going to be pretty cool. This is our once a month meeting. So normally we do this at the hotel and we can't do hotels for some weird reason. I don't know why, um, but <laughs> what we're able to do is uh, do cool things like this. So we get to grab AG. He's on the other side of town and uh, way on the other side of town. And he's able to come up to the North, North Houston real estate investors. And we're able to go across the nation with this information. Um, hey, that rhyme. Uh, we got some really cool stuff to go over. And then we also, uh, I just wanted to tell you what we do at North Houston. So uh, we do trainings. We do um, basically run a networking group of everybody who is looking at getting more involved with real estate investing um, on all different levels. Um, so if you are a lender or a newer investor, if you're a wholesaler, rehabber, flipper, um, renter, you do Airbnbs, any type of real estate investing. This is what we help you do to move forward. We have speakers come in all the time. We'll probably have more speakers now that we can go um, multiple times a month. And uh, we also have, oh, I got somebody who's saying about the link. Um, so multiple times a month. And so this is, I don't know, something like our 48th, almost, we're, we're very close to getting our 50th, 50th uh, meeting, which is every single month for the past four and a half years. So we have vendors that come in, they'll be able to talk with you guys and connect with you guys. Um, so in the meantime, uh, as this whole thing is going on, uh, you have Maria on here, uh, you have my uh, messenger app right now is actually being dinged right now. Um, from those who want to get more information. So if you want more information or you want to connect to the group, just connect. And um, they're probably doing um, watch parties right now. It should be, right? Yeah. Okay, so they're all doing watch parties right now. So um, you should be able to connect in different ways. If you just say, hey, give me more information on the watch party, we'll send you to the group. We'll send you the group link. Gotcha? Yeah. All right, so let me do a screen share, and then AG, if you want to get your screen share ready, um, I'm ready. Let me share. Ooh, not that. Let me make sure I got this right. All right, let me hide all my passwords. There you go. All right. Here you go, guys. So this is uh, North Houston Real Estate Investors, like I said. And then here are our um, our vendors. We're going to go through them a little bit. A couple of them are still getting on. Um, and then again, here's the purpose, to provide great content and education to build your business. Um, I started off by going to networking events. Back then, we'd show up in person. We'd shake people's hands. There was no mask involved at that time. Um, and then we uh, just connect with all people. I met lenders there. I learned from coaches and mentors. And then uh, we're also just doing positive, creative environment all the time. Anytime you're around NHREI or Vertical House Buyers, my company, um, we just we know how hard it could be getting involved. And so what we want to do is provide great content to get you started. And then everything is really practical and applicable. So when AG and I had this conversation of what to do and how to get moving into uh, this tonight, really, um, AG has a lot of great content to share. And one of the key things that we talked about is what can we do right now? And so he puts in this part of saying, Hey, what's to do in the next 90 days, which is really fun and really cool to do because all of us need to know what we could be doing in the next 90 days. All right. 
So um, do we have any more vendors that are showing up? Is that it? All right, so let's go to our vendors. And we have quite a few vendors here. Here, I'll take this off. All right, so um, I'll go and I'll speak for the ones that aren't here. So we have Fast Track Remodeling. I know a lot of people just from this networking event uh, use uh, Elijah and his group and Fast Track Remodeling. So they do full turnkey remodeling. Um, if you're doing rehabs or make readies for your rental properties, this is a good group to be involved with. Um, they'll give you a fast offer or fast quote on your property. Um, and, and you can give them a shout. We'll have their link on there also. So that way you can connect with them and Elijah or, or one of their reps. And then uh, we also have Goosehead. Luis, I don't think he's going to be able to make it. But guys, if you want an insurance company that can really help you out as an investor, Goosehead is one of the ones we use a lot. Uh, really fast, easy. Hey, I'm about to buy this property. Let me know what's up. There's plenty of times that I'm about to buy a property and like literally the day before, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot that we need to have insurance or somebody in the office might've forgot that we need to have insurance. <laughs> and so we'll give them a shout. Um, and then mind management. Uh, if you guys have properties you need to manage, you need to get a hold of these guys. Uh, that's with Steve Rosenberg. If you know Steve, if you've been part of our group before, you've seen Steve talk plenty of times. All right, he has a lot of great info. And then also Real Estate IQ. So Real Estate IQ, if you haven't heard from them, you need to connect with them. Becky was supposed to be on here. I think we just missed her. And um, basically what they do is a lot of online, like list polling, data polling. They'll be able to do um, almost like an MLS for those who are not realtors. So if you're not realtors, you might want to check out Real Estate IQ to get you some good comps. So I think I went through everybody. All right. Uh, Natalie Cal, go ahead and unmute. Cal, you want to go ahead and go? Unmute. Let me unmute. There you go. How was that? How's that? All oh. right. Good deal. You hear me all right? You're good. Cool. Cool. Yeah, Cal, Longhorn Investments. You know, we've, we've been with this group for as long as it's been around. Uh, so over the four and a half years. And uh, we appreciate all the guys who have uh, done loans with us. Uh, helped us grow over the years. You know, we're here for you. We're super quick, fast money, hard money, uh, three to five day close, um, hundred million dollars plus and, you know, available capital. Um, super easy to get pre-qualified. Uh, you go out to www.longhorninvestments.com. Um, uh, hop on there, takes a couple minutes and get pre-qualified. Uh, my number direct and I do answer my phone. 281-923-9141. Give us a call. Give us a shot. Uh, we are, you know, close super fast to any major city in Texas. We have a couple other, several other markets out there. Um, and uh, we are also investors. So we, uh, you know, currently have a rental, rental home portfolio. I'm very, uh, uh, can help you if you're going to build a rental portfolio. Uh, certainly know the ins and outs of that for long-term financing as well. So love to love to speak to you. Give us a call 281-923-9141. Thanks. Cool. Game on. <clears throat> Natalie, what you got? Hey guys, uh, Natalie with Investor Loan Source. Uh, we're also a uh, money lender for all your investment needs. Uh, we cover pretty much everything from your uh, typical fix and flips. We also do your long-term rentals. Uh, we have five, five, 20 and 30 year rentals available and we're known for our wrappable loan for owner financing. And then also for everyone just getting started right now or like getting a little uh, either scared of getting uh, started or just need questions answered. Uh, you always feel free to give me a call. Um, my phone number direct line is 713-904-3431. And then also anytime that you're looking at a property, if you submit an application or do uh, just a pre-approval, you'll automatically have a proof of funds in your email box and I can help uh, review the deal with you and, and work you through it to make sure that it makes sense for you and the deal makes sense itself. So here if you need me and I'll definitely put all of my contact information in the comments as well. Game on, game on, all right. All right, guys. And then we are Vertical House Buyers. That's the name of my company, guys. We're buying all the time, um, all the time. We've been getting into buying some um, multifamily stuff, some land stuff, RV parks, 
uh, mobile home parks, definitely look into those. And then we normally do the, the normal uh, flips and rentals and you name it. So if you guys need help JVing or if you need some help um, analyzing some deals or helping with the seller, uh, we have a pretty good team that's good with working with sellers and help you move through that process. Or if you just need a despo a deal, we can help you do that also. So that's a little bit about vertical house buyers. Go vertical. All right. So, AG, you ready? I'm ready, brother. Is it? All right. Um, can you do a screen share? I sure can. You can share. Let me see if I get you here. All right. You're set. I'm set. Okay, let me go ahead and begin the screen share. Don't show any passwords or anything. <laughs> All right, my there. Okie dokes. Here we go. Boom, got it. All righty. Are we starting? Should we? We're starting. You're good, man. You're... Excellent, guys. Well, thank you so much for having me on, Gabe. Uh, yeah, uh, this is my first time speaking at your uh, at your wonderful organization, North Houston Real Estate, North Houston Ria. It's great, man. I think you guys are, have picked a location that by far has been pacing the Houston market and the growth in the Houston MSA than any other areas. So congratulations on being strategically positioned in the Houston market area, man. Strategic. Yeah. Well, hey, <laughs> you, um, why don't you do a quick intro? I didn't think about that. Why don't you uh, do a little bit about whenever I intro people, I always leave out like three or four things because uh, as a business owner and a real estate person, there's always new stuff happening that we're working on. So the last time I talked to you, you probably have two or three more projects that you want to talk about that you're doing also. So why don't you introduce yourself on the many things you do, and then let's go from there. Sure thing, man. So uh, again, my name is AG. I own a company called Real Acquisitions. Um, we are primarily a lead generation source, have been the number one source of lead gen for the real estate uh, professional market since 2009, hands down. I mean, you may have heard of other companies that, uh, that are trying to compete in the lead generation space, but uh, the number of wholesalers, the number of rehabbers, the number of wholesale, uh, specifically wholesale agents that operate on a platform of bar none, and we've been the market leader since 2009, and I'll, and I'll talk a little more about as we go along as, as to what exactly is it that we, we do more. Uh, then uh, since 2013, we've also been in the single family buy and hold space. Uh, we self own and operate currently approximately uh, 50 homes in uh, single family homes in Houston, Texas. Uh, our peak was 2016. Uh, we were close to about 100 homes right here in the Houston market. Uh, and since then, we've been selling like crazy and enjoying the, the quick appreciation and the quick uh, equity capture that, uh, that came in the market space. And truly, those, uh, the past five years have been a testament of the power of single family wealth building. If there's anyone uh, who does not believe in how quickly somebody's fortunes can change. I, uh, I challenge wow. you to come and spend 10 minutes with me and I'll show you how in five years, my family's fortunes have changed for generations to come because of what single family investing did for us, specifically between 2013 and 2016. So it's been absolutely gorgeous. We've really been thankful for that. Uh, 2015, uh, we also went in single family luxury construction. We have now done quite a few homes in the Houston market. We operate primarily in the $450 a square foot and up market. Uh, Westview, River Oak, Stanglewood, Bel Air. These are some of our places that we, we do single family spec homes. Uh, and then off late for the past 18 months, We've also gone, expanded our construction services into small multifamily as well as a small uh, apartment complexes. I'm sorry, small uh, retail, uh, uh, multi 
uh, family, I'm sorry, multi-use centers. I'm sorry, my phone keeps going off. Give me one second, guys. Make that deal. Make the deal. What's up, Kathy? So, anywho, so this is a little bit about me, my background. Uh, we've enjoyed the process. And what I always like saying is that a part of the reason why I believe I'm able to bring some unique perspective uh, is because of the fact that uh, not only are we seeing the activities that some of the smallest to some of the largest wholesalers and agents are doing in the off-market space because of real acquisitions, uh, right. I'm also <laughs> able to bring perspective uh, from a commercial lending standpoint because a lot of people in our space, unfortunately, are completely immune or disconnected from commercial lending. You know, hard money and private money is the, the place where they typically go. But the reality is that our industry is heavily driven by, uh, by commercial money because behind private money, most of the times, especially hard money, is always commercial lending. Uh, and as developers and builders, we're very connected to that space. So uh, we, we see some trends and some of which I hope to talk about tonight. Cool. Let's do it. So guys, I am super pumped up. AG, you got this. Let's ask some questions. I'm going to be monitoring some of the questions, guys. If you're on here, I'll say it again. And AG, if you want to pause every now and then, if you guys have questions, this is the time to do it. So just comment in the link somewhere. Uh, everybody's looking at the different, we got a, a team over here that are looking at your questions. I want to make sure that we take advantage of getting AG on here. Uh, it's not all day or any day that we could just get him on here or get him face to face with some of your questions. And so uh, he'd be happy to pause. We have quite a bit of time to go over stuff. He's got data to bring, but if you have questions, comment on here and then like the page also. So let's do it or like the group. It should be in the chat, in your chat group. All right, let's do it, AG. Awesome. So we'll talk mainly about the following five things. I'd like to get started by giving you a little perspective, a little background on real acquisitions. I see that uh, quite a bit of the audience here is not familiar with who we are and what we do. So I, I want to give you a little background about our services specifically. Uh, we also want to talk briefly about what is the new normal? What's really happening in the market space? Because there's a, such massive amount of misinformation that I see exists in the market space. It really irritates me a lot. So we'll talk about what the new normal is. What, 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 what are some of specifically, what are some of the things that you should stay away from? Not about the kind of deals that you should do, but deals that you should not be doing right now. We'll, we'll talk briefly about that. And then uh, I'll talk briefly about uh, this, this thing that I've been noticing and seeing in the social media space about this barrage of foreclosure deals coming down the pipeline and how we should be all ready with our sleeves rolled up with our money money uh, bags lined up to be able to go and scoop these deals at a crazy discount. We'll talk about what my perspective is on that. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about two of my favorite topics, which is I always like seeing what are the big boys doing. Because again, yeah. one problem of being a small medium scale real estate investors like most of us are is that we are we, we are the we are the fish of spawn small ponds we are the frogs that that have this little well around us these 15 people that uh, we high five all the time and we pump up all the time and you know uh, we we never really get to know what some of the institutional and big boys are doing guys that invest that buy 500 600 homes in a day what are some of the transactioneering happening at that level? What are some of the plays happening at that level? I always keep my ears close to the ground and my eyes on those guys because the reality is, is that uh, what they do, we end up doing at a smaller level two, three years down the road. So if we can get to talk about some of that stuff, it's, it's very vital. That's and then last, of course, a natural transition of that is that if you are somebody who knows how to position himself or herself correctly. You can create generational wealth. I told you a story last time we spoke about how inspired I was when I was my son's age. But I heard a story from my grandfather about people creating generational wealth because they had the ability of thinking 200 years 
ahead. Awesome. And since then, that's something that sat with me tremendously as a child, that uh, the truly wealthy don't have uh, annual or biannual or five-year or 10-year goals. They're genuinely able to position themselves and their families for hundreds of years to come. And, and I really believe at the core of my heart that what's happening today can position many of us in that, in that um, place where if we, if we are not complacent, if we get out of that little zone, comfort zone that we have, we truly can have a generational impact on, on, uh, uh, on basically our families. Okay. So real acquisitions. As I said, we are the largest source, source of off-market leads, off-market data in Texas, hands down. We provide many, many, many different kinds of leads, divorce leads, loan modifications, pre-foreclosures, tax delinquencies, suits, judgments, auctions, hospital liens, income tax liens, MLS data, and on and on and on and on and on and on. Uh, at any given time, we are, we are capturing and uh, uh, monitoring close to about quarter million leads on a daily basis this tremendous amount of opportunity that exists in the off-market space. And I encourage anyone and everyone who has not checked us out to simply go to realacquisitions.com, create a free account, a free trial account. It's a seven-day free trial, no agenda, no hidden things, and, and check it out. Uh, the, we also offer to investors uh, one of my personal pet peeves because we realized uh, in the last couple of years that most small investors are spending upwards of $500 a month on their marketing CRMs, on their marketing platforms. Guys that are seriously doing it, guys that talk about it, don't really do anything, but guys that are really doing some marketing and have a decent CRM are using things like Podio build outs, you know, like Infusionsoft or um, I mean, there are five or six out there. And truly, fully scale and fully operational, these guys are spending an easily upwards of 500 bucks a month on their platform. And as I said, that irritates the heck out of me. Uh, so we spend a quarter million dollars of our own development money for the past two years. And we developed probably the number one real estate marketing CRM bar none. And I'll be talking about today how people can have access to the marketing CRM, CRM for literally pennies on the dollars, it provides you the ability to do all kinds of text campaigns, email blasts, RVMs, uh, direct mail, Google ranking websites, automations of all sorts, deal analyzers, location specific estimations. So if you're doing estimations in Woodland, Texas, or in Bel Air where I am, or in California, or in Chicago, you can use localized numbers that are fed in to the system. It'll create live construction estimates for you. We have contract generators, we have wholesale marketplace, and of course we have task and people manager. So many, many, many features, which otherwise you'd be spending an upwards of $500, if not more, to have a fully functioning CRMs now at your fingertips. Cool. Uh, now, let me begin by saying, and this is a, a, a saying from a good friend of mine, Mitch Stevens out of San Antonio. He says, you're not getting wealthy unless you're in the way of a money truck. And the reality is that most of us never really figure out where the money truck is. Most of the times people in our space are chasing money trucks versus having the way of money trucks and money trucks running bam into them. So a purpose of, of uh, presentations like this is to talk about trends and open up your mind to all the wonderful things that are coming your way so that you can predict and be before there and take advantage of some of the trends there. Like for those of you who were on this call before the actual seven o'clock gong, I threw a nugget and that nugget really came from, from a very, very close insider friend who knows about what's happening in one of our spaces. And for the five or six of you who were on this call, like what, 30 minutes ago, you got a piece of information. I genuinely believe if you use that piece of information uh, strategically, intelligently, and you take action on it, those five of you will, will make millions of dollars in the next 10 years if you use that information correctly, right? So that's what the reality of information is. Uh, and Warren Buffett said this once. He said, the only difference between me the world's most successful stock trader 
at an average Joe Blow who loses money each year, sometimes makes, sometimes loses. The only difference between that guy and me is information. That I have information and they don't. And that's the trick. That's the name of the game today. This is the world of information technology. This is the world where you take information uh, and you process information. And that's what we will be doing for the next 30 minutes and change. Now, nice. let's, let's simplify things, guys. I mean, there are tons and tons of data that's thrown our way. If you are on Facebook, you are one of those people who probably uh, knows uh, uh, extreme information about your little vertical. But the problem of a lot of this information uh, coming your way at many different sources is many a times, instead of improving our decision-making capability, it numbs us. And it numbs us simply because there's way too much information being thrown at us all the time. And I sometimes feel it's almost like somebody coming right from my little phone and slapping me on the phone with each time like, I have this information, then I have this information, then I have this information. I really feel slapped around all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do with all this data coming my way? So I want to simplify something for you guys. If you break down real estate uh, basics, like what really makes real estate opportunities, things to come, that money truck that's heading your way, it falls essentially in four categories, four things that you really need to be focused about all the time. Look at employment statistics. Look at housing inventory. And of course, if you're commercial, you would look at commercial inventory. Look at the 10-year treasury bond or the 10-year te treasury note, because that's drives the residential mortgages. And then look at, of course, your population drifts. What are the changes happening in population? If you just learn to keep your eye and find good sources of data for these four parameters. You've already, you really don't need a guru like Gabe or myself to be able to tell you what's happening in the market space. You actually do need Gabe because Gabe is uh, much more uh, involved. I mean, you guys, you do a lot of stuff on the wholesaling side as well, right, Gabe? That's right, man. Yeah, so, so I mean, and plus Gabe is a super... Uh, involved with the club members as well. So I really appreciate that. But you really don't need gurus to be telling you what's happening in the market space as long as you're connected with these four topics or four uh, items. So let's, let's, de let's jump right into it and let's talk about what, what's really happening in these four areas. And that, if you think about it, will give you the, the benchmark of our very first topic. It's deals that you really should not be doing right now or rather the only thing that you should be focusing on for the next few months. Here you go. All BS aside, I don't care if you're a Trumper or non-Trumper. I don't care if you're a masker or non-masker. I don't care if you're a pro-vaccine or non-vaccine. At the end of the day, employment is improving rapidly in Texas. Initial unemployment insurance claim in Texas are now down to 66,000 uh, as of last week. And this is data as of yesterday, by the way. This is not some old slide. As of yesterday, we are, are seeing a consecutive drop. I believe this is the fourth or the third consecutive drop, monthly drop in unemployment uh, insurance claims, which means insurance is coming, employment is, is rising uh, <clears throat> consistently. We'll get specifically into numbers. Now, do keep in mind, insurance claims are slightly skewed because some analysts also believe that after a few while, right now we are what, in August? So April, May, June, July, August. So almost a fifth slash six month going into a craziness. Some people believe that some people have just given up. They've left the market space and they're no longer filing for unemployment. But that aside, this is a great indicator that insurance uh, employment is improving in a wonderful state. Now, here are the actual stats. Month by month for the past 12 months of what's really happening. Now, as everybody know, Texas led the nation in terms of unemployment. It led the nation in terms of job creation. And right, what you're seeing on your screen, the very first column is, is of course, the date, the month. Second column is the number of non-agricultural jobs that people are holding in Texas. 
The third is a change in the employment rate. Forget about the, the fifth column, just focus on, in reality, just focus on column number two and column number four. Column number two is the number of non-agricultural jobs. And column number four is the actual unemployment rate. So as you saw that uh, while the nation was give or take around 4%, we've been sub four the entire part of good, good uh, of last year. And then of course, shit hit the fan in, in March. And then really hit the fan in April, right? But right from April has been a steady decline in unemployment. Yeah. And uh, the July numbers are about to be, I believe 15th is when the numbers come out for July. And I, I'm pretty confident that even despite uh, the spike that we saw that came in the, the latter part of May, we'll see this number drop down to probably March number. So we should be around the 5%, 6% number. That's what analysts are predicting in Texas. So situation is drastically improving. But the one caveat, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, and Dallas, these four metro areas account for approximately 60% of non-agricultural jobs in Texas. Wow. So, so the, and the, and the recovery in all these four areas is, is very, very different. Uh, you can probably imagine where the fastest recovery is. Can you guess out of these four metros? Houston. Austin. Austin. Austin followed by San Antonio, followed by Houston, followed by Dallas. Uh, wow. Yes. So this is where the fastest recovery is. So the, the Austin, San Antonio, which now is very quickly becoming one single metro area, uh, is definitely re leading the job recovery. Houston, needless to say, got hit primarily because of the hospitality, uh, the, the oil industry, and of course, the, uh, the medical field as well, because a lot of medical professionals, believe it or not, lost their jobs since elective surgeries were down for quite a few months. Right. But, uh, but overall, things are looking wonderful in our states. Population, let's talk about population growth. Did you know this? That as of December 2019, there were an estimated 170 people a day moving into the Austin San Antonio MSA. Wow. 170 people a day moving into these areas. So again, as a Texas-based investor, or if you're listening to this call from outside Texas, keep your eye for all the craziness that's happening in these two market areas. It's ain't gonna stop. The population growth is not going down, uh, combined with the factors that uh, Austin, San Antonio has <clears throat> more or less been insulated from all the weather-related bad rep that Houston got. Uh, so the, the population growth is consistently growing up like crazy. Here we go. Here are the actual population numbers by city. Check this out. This is, of course, DFW. So as of December 2019 or end of 2019, the net population change, there were 46,000 people that moved in with a net population change of 1.5% year over year. So now the DFW market is almost seven and a half million strong. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy, my friend. <laughs> we have the Houston Metro. <clears throat> so contrary to popular belief, Houston is not as populous as Metro. And we have seen some declining population trends post Harvey in Houston, it's just starting to pick back up. We are now give or take about 7 million. Houston Metro, as you probably know, is the considered Houston Woodlands and Sugarland. That's considered the MSA. Important numbers, guys. Many of us make these, uh, make these blind decisions based on intuition, based on this thing we hear on, on social media, this guy who told you something at my local club or my local school. Uh, but numbers is, is what needs to decide and dictate what you're making empirical decisions on. So check this out. 
7 million population of the Houston metro area. Then of course, San Antonio. Now look at this. 21,000 people. There are more people moving into the Houston metro. I'm sorry, moving into the little San Antonio metro. Then Go back to Houston? Go back to Houston. 7,000. Wow. <clears throat> That's crazy. And think about this, right? Since 2016, if you take out 20,000 or, or 20,000 right here, we really had only about 15,000 people plus minus moving into the Houston Metro for the past five years. Let us check out uh, San Antonio. Almost 100,000 population growth in San Antonio. For sure. And add to the fact, look at this. 41. Look at this. If, you, if you consider Goodness Houston, great. San Antonio and Austin as one single metro, check this out. So my prediction is that in the next five to seven years, the San Antonio Austin metro is essentially going to be one giant metro area that probably is as large, if not larger, in the Houston or the Dallas Metroplex. Wow. Now, I'll pause <laughs> it for a second. If you are a real estate investor listening to this, where here is Austin, here is San Antonio. Where would or how would you position yourself knowing that this is rapidly going to become one giant metro area? Yeah. You would position yourself today by buying property, buying land, or getting yourself situated with some deals that has equity in counties in between Houston, I'm sorry, in between San Antonio and Austin. Absolutely. That's a tip that right there, guys. If you're listening to this as a long <clears throat> play real estate investor, look at counties, become a part of counties, invest in counties in between Austin and San Antonio. They're still affordable. You can still go and buy an acre for under 5,000. Tons of opportunities for you in those markets still. Let's look <clears> at our, our housing activity. All said and done, there are many, many factors related to housing. But at the end of the day, most important factor that you guys need to think about as a real estate investor is housing inventory. If you're new and if you're listening to this for the first time, what is inventory? Inventory at the end of the day is the balance between supply and demand. Higher the supply and lower the demand. Lower, I'm sorry, yes, lower will be the inventory. Did yeah. I say that right? Higher the supply, lower the demand, higher will be the inventory, sorry. On the right. other hand, lower the supply and higher the demand, lower will be the inventory. Meaning when demand outpaces supply, that's where low inventory originates from. Now, traditionally, most metros in Texas have tethered, give or take, around three to four months of inventory. Three to four months of inventory. We will look at what's happening in the market space now. But I will tell you this, as a real estate investor, as an active real estate investor, you need to be hyper-focused in some of your local markets, in some of your local areas, in local zip codes. So we will take a look at what's happening in the entire nation, and then we'll take a quick, short, deep dive into some of the local metro areas and local zip codes, maybe within Houston itself. So let's take a look. Here we go. Your monthly housing activity, number of units sold, since January, January through December for the last three years. It's probably getting cut off, but blue is 2018, red is 2019, and green is, of course, 2020. So we have data at this point only until end of June. As I said, end of July data is about to be released. But if you noticed, as of end of June, when COVID was at its peak, end of May, beginning of June, mid-June, COVID was at its peak in Texas. Even at that time, we sold more homes across Texas 
than any other month in the last three years. Not just year over year, but in the last June was the record month for residential sales in the last three years. Wow. And this is the chart that you really want to look at. The median price of a single family home and, a re- and an average price of a single family home in Texas against inventory. Look at this. 3.9 months of inventory in June, three months of inventory now. You've almost reduced the inventory by, by almost a month. And look at those median prices and average prices consistently rising and continuing to arise. We are now selling almost 12, listen to this, $12 billion dollars of real estate, residential real estate in Texas a <laughs> month, a month, my friends. This is bigger than the economy of many, many, many countries. This is bigger than the GDP of many countries. That's the residential market in Texas in one month. That's <clears> what you're looking at. So if you're sitting on the sidelines, if you're listening to this and you are a stock trader, if you are a broker, if you're those guys that has been hurt and your 401k has, be, has become 101k numerous <laughs> times in the last 10 years, look at this, guys. This is not going anywhere. This activity is going to continue to grow. I know I'm only showing you figures for the past one month, but if you go back and look at residential sales in Texas or in general across the United States for the past 10 years, you'll only see a consistently rising picture. This ain't going anywhere. With one caveat, the housing price index was released about two weeks ago. Actually, no, about a week ago. And I made a post about that on Facebook too. Housing price index was released, which predicted that prices will be more or less stable across the nation. We are predicting a 1% drop, which is, I mean, it's, it's within the margin of error. So prices of homes to be consistent, to be stable, not going up for the next one year. Average across the nation, but I do not see that happening in Texas. As the population growth continues to grow, as unemployment tethers consistently down, more and more people will be coming. We're not building any more new homes there. They're not, the, the, the housing availability of newer housing is not outpacing the population growth in Texas. We are not going to uh, be where the nation is, stable prices. We definitely will see, I predict, a 3 to 5% increase in property values year over year between now and summer of 2021. So remember that. Wow. Now here's another chart. I'll let it, let it sit on your screens for a few seconds. If you are a real estate investor and you do not know what this is, I urge you to become familiar as a long-term player with something called affordability index. Affordability index. At the end of the day, wherever people can afford homes, that's where the migration of population will happen. This is a great early predictor of where the pricing, increase in pricing is going to happen. So right. by counties, what you're looking at now is what is the affordability of people who are making 20% down payment and the housing payment, their monthly payment represents about 30% of their income. Which are the most affordable counties for them to live in? Which are the most affordable counties for them that, to live in? Kerr, Travis. At the bottom, not very affordable. But you'll see a lot of counties, a lot of counties in West Texas, a lot of counties in East Texas, a lot of counties in between Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Austin Metroplex, you know, the triangle that's formed. Still tons and tons of opportunities for investors. I won't tell you which counties you have to do your own homework, but right there is the answer in front of your screen. Plop these counties if I were you. Plop these counties on a map and see which of these counties will be 
uh, great places where people who can't afford house homes in San Antonio proper, in Austin proper, in Houston proper, in, San, in Dallas proper, where will they migrate to? And okay. that's your answer right there. That's your answer right there of, of the best deals, best places to look at. So for those who are looking at this or who might have done a screenshot on this, uh, what you're saying is that so these lower counties here that are in the 1.5, as they go up to the three, the three is the more expensive. Affordable. No, no, it's the other way around. The the Wichita more- Falls is more affordable than Travis. Gotcha. The Man. index for the, the higher the index, the more affordable. So this is a descending order of affordability. Now, I, for once, don't want to be next in Wichita Falls. But at the same time, I don't want to be buying a home in Travis County right now. Right. <clears throat> but, but look what Bear is. With all the craziness happening, Bear is still in the middle. Look where Harris is. Still in the middle. Right. Right? It's a great chart right here, my friends. It is. Okay. So what are the key takeaways? If you got all the nuggets, if you understand what to do, what not to do, think about this. Wholesaling in secondary and tertiary markets. So if you are a wholesaler listening to this, stop wasting your time in trying to wholesale in primary markets like Harris County, Fort Bend County, uh, Dallas County, Tarrant County, Travis County, Bear County, move to secondary and tertiary markets. That's where the opportunity lies, guys. That's where you'll find tons and tons and tons of buyers. That's where you find tons and tons and tons of sellers willing to accept 50%, 60%, 70%, 70%, 70 cents on their dollar values. Key takeaway, takeaway, my friends. You'll get a much higher bang for your buck if you look at secondary and tertiary markets. I have not done this analysis in the last, I wanna say five months, but as of March, I believe it was the last month, last time I did this analysis, as of March of, of 2020, do you know, Gabe, which was the sexiest, hardest market in Texas to be in, in terms of inventory and profitability, if you were a house flipper or even a wholesaler? <clears throat> uh, Trinity County. <laughs> Huntsville, Texas. Huntsville, Texas. Huntsville, Texas. People are making unbelievable in a survey done for house, uh, house uh, on house flippers and wholesalers revealed the highest percentage of profitability for flippers in Huntsville, highest assignment fee margins for wholesalers in Huntsville, Texas as of March. I don't have the data for the last six months. So secondary and tertiary markets. Number two, land development opportunities. I don't care how small you are. I don't care how big you are. You can do flips. You can do wholesales. But I urge you, as much as you can, get your hands in, get your feet in land development opportunities in the San Antonio and Austin MSA. And there are tons and tons and tons of examples that I can give you of land development opportunities, be it buying acreage parcels and subdividing them, be it joint venturing on agricultural land and or be be it doing options on agricultural land in and around the San Antonio and Austin MSA. So tremendous opportunities there. Um, I'll tell you a story, Gabe. A few months ago, I went to a commercial real estate uh, event in uh, right here in Galleria, uh, and, you know, I, I walked into this event and somebody had invited me to listen to an economic forecast and all that good stuff. So I, get, I, I like getting to places early. I'm, uh, I, I hate traffic. I hate standing in line. So I get there early. I'm sitting on my seat. And a few minutes before the event is about to start, this, you know, regular dude walks into the room. And it's like, man, it's like Brad Pitt or some other superstar walked in. It's like everybody in the room thronged this guy and they were like mobbing him and asking him for the trusting business cards in his pockets, asking him to set up an appointment. I'm like, who is this guy? Uh, And I really, I mean, I know a lot of people in in Texas in real estate. I I have no idea who this guy is, right? 
So the event starts 30, 40 minutes into this event. This guy walks up to grab a cup of coffee at the back and I, I skedaddle. I want to see who this guy is. So I, I tap him on the shoulder. I'm like, excuse my impertinence and my ignorance, but who are you, man? Like, wh why are all these people thronging you? Who are you? He said, you know, I, I just a, um, a real estate um, uh, investor in, in, in Houston and my family owns quite a bit of real estate. And, you know, these guys want to list the commercial properties and they always throng us. They always want to do business with us. That's why they're, I'm, you know, I'm very popular. I'm like, okay, great. Good for you. But I own a lot of real estate. I don't get this kind of a treatment. What, what the hell do you own? He says, listen to this. He says, we own eight blocks in all directions on Westheimer and Post Oak. Mm. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> if you listen to this call, if you do not know what that is, that's probably the most expensive, or the most expensive block in, in, of real estate in Texas. I mean, definitely in Houston, maybe in Texas. And they own eight blocks. That's like two miles in either direction oh. is what they own in right here. So I'm like, I, I was speechless. I'm like, how do you even do this? How do you even buy this. I, I don't even know that real estate must be worth hundreds of billions of dollars worth of real estate. How do you own something like that? Listen to this. Listen, to this is, this ties back to land development opportunities. He said, what my grandfather did is that back in the 1920s, 1910s, whatever, he would follow Westheimer, which again, if you're not from Houston, that's a prominent road that cuts east to west Houston. He said he would follow that that farm to market road, basically Westheimer. And wherever that farm to market road, that Westheimer would intersect another farm to market road, my grandfather would, would buy options on that entire intersection. And that's what he did for 20 years. For 20 wow. years, he kept buying options as Westheimer stretched. So that entire post oak Westheimer intersection was purchased on one option. Wow. Can you believe that? That's where the opportunities in land development lies, my friend. And this is, if you're a visionary, if you bought into the idea of what I told you a few minutes ago about thinking hundreds of years ahead, not this silly one year, five year, 10 year game plan. This is the time to get yourself situated position in this metropolitan area. Number three, you probably saw the inventory. So again, this is the time to get above your game. If you're a rehabber, get over that, man. Stop wasting your time in rehabbing here and there and making 50, 60, 70 grand in rehabbing opportunities. This is the time to get into low income housing. Low income affordable housing is the name of the game. Housing inventory ain't going up. Housing is continuing, is going to be continuing continue is going to continue to be on a on an upward spiral you are not going to be able to get your hands in this is the time position yourself in projects if you can on doing low income affordable housing that's basically what we're doing we are buying these 10,000 15,000 parcels of land all over Houston and we are building 12 15 20 22 units however we could squeeze there of low income housing projects on there if you're listening to this call and if, if you have any interest in seeing any of our projects, I'd love to invite you to our projects and you can see how, you know, what the, what the construction plans look like, what the density calculation looks like, what the financials looks like. I'll be delighted to show you what these things are. Buy me a nice lunch and I'll be happy to walk you around, drive you around and show mm -hmm. you how these things are, um, are financially positioned. Uh, so position yourself, get over that, that those, those single family housing flips. If you're doing that, congratulations, get over that crap, man. You start playing in these spaces where the opportunities are going to come. I love now, it. What are the big boys doing? So we talked about what not to do. Let's talk about what are the big boys really doing in the market space, my friends. Let's, let's, let's take a break real quick. Cause I got, a, I got questions coming in for you, man. Hold on a second. You, you're going. <laughs> All right, so let's get some questions. First of all, hey guys, thanks a lot for giving a shout out for those who are sharing this. Uh, we got a couple of shares that are on here. Thanks, Maria, Lou, uh, a couple other folks that were sharing. Um, let's see, we have some good comments. Yes, 107 people or 107 people are coming in a day. Population growth. That was a huge takeaway for Mike. Uh, Mike Stanford. 
it's mentioned. more man it was like, like 170 i think yeah 170 a day right 170 yeah. Yeah. freaking 170 a day yeah 170 a day dude in the in the austin in the austin san antonio msa that's crazy so everyone has to find somewhere to live. I mean, so I guess that kind of depends on how many people that is, how many households that is of that 170, um, right? I mean, you've, you've seen, if you're, again, if you're from Texas and you've been to Austin, San Antonio, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, these guys are like a, like a neighborhood of Houston. These guys yeah. are like a small, small, small city. There's a tremendous amount of housing pressure it happening yeah. in these cities. That's crazy. Okay. So, Hey, are you going to go into, so we have someone who's saying, Hey, I need to know some thoughts. Uh, Mike was asking on single family Airbnbs uh, with this climate of what we're talking about here. Is that going to affect with the population, everything we're going on? I mean, is that, do you see anything happening there? Well, I'll tell you what my, what my take on Airbnb is, despite all the negative rep that Airbnb has gotten in the last few months. And, you know, they've done some crappy things to their hosts, which I really does not speak uh, um, very highly of, of Airbnb as a company, but I think short-term rentals are here to stay. They're yeah. not going anywhere. And if there's one thing that as an Airbnb or a short, I should, I should stop calling, calling it Airbnb because, you know, I, I predict more and more short-term rental spaces, opportunities are going to erupt. Um, and you should definitely partake in those opportunities if you can. But my prediction is on short-term rentals, uh, the name of the game is not going to be houses, uh, apartments, it's going to be houses. People that are uh, on Airbnb and have gotten their, their businesses crushed and, and they've been driven out of the market space are, are people who have apartments. But people who have houses are doing extremely well in the mm. market space in the last four months. Now, that does not mean that Airbnb or short-term rental for apartment complexes is out the door. But if I was an investor, my key takeaway was, if I want to invest in a short-term rental, uh, I'd rather position myself with a single family uh, versus a condo apartment type project. And there are you know, tons right. of opportunities to do that too. Game on, game on. Uh, Sam, I want to ask this question. We already answered it, but he was saying that, um, hey, can you tell us more about the supply and demand of the single family and multifamily in the area? We just went over that. If you didn't catch it back up a bit or whenever we go and we share it, uh, I'll be able to go a little bit more into detail if you have any questions or just connect with AG. Uh, and he said, what resources or info do you use to estimate supply and demand? Here, uh, let, me, let me take a deeper dive. That's a good question. I don't want to go too deep on that. I know we got a lot to go over, but this, like I said, I, I asked people to ask questions. There's some of the questions. Uh, let's see. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Uh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Go daddy. What's up daddy. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So if you guys can see my screen right now, I want to show you this thing. Man, too many windows open. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on the RA. This is, I'm logging to real acquisitions. And to answer your question, this is how we look at inventory. And we are right now showing you inventory at, of all the major metro markets uh, in Texas. But more importantly, and this is what I wanted uh, you to see, Mike or whoever asked this question. This is a great question. Inventory really should be seen at the micro level than the macro level. This will blow your mind. Check this out. I'm going to go ahead and click on the heat map. And I'm going to go ahead and say in the Houston metro area in the last six months in Harris County, for example, what's really going on? What's really happening? And this is a live inventory map of the Houston metro area as we speak. Deeper the red, lower the inventory, better the area, darker the blue, cooler the area, meaning higher the inventory. Essentially, you want to stay away from it. If you want to take a screenshot of this, this is a great microeconomic map of the Houston Metro. Of course, you can log into real, I can pull similar stats on Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, and whatnot. Nice. 
right? So this is how we do it. This is life. Uh, we, we, at Real Acquisitions, we even outpace, and I, I know I'm tooting my own horn, but at Real Acquisitions, we outpace even HAR in publishing this data. This is, of course, MLS. This is not coming from you know, Zillow or some, some source like that. This is actual MLS data. And you notice we're outpacing what's happening in the market space. This is a great resource. I also want to show you another thing here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to rankings. And I want to see in the last three months where COVID has been disastrous, what is the rank of these zip codes in our local market? Check this out. I'm going to go and say, show me the areas with the highest volume of sale, but the lowest inventory. Did you catch that? No, where just, are, are the no. most homes selling, but where is the least inventory? Check this out. Here you go. Here's the answer. If you're a real estate investor listening to this, this is probably hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of information for you for free. And of course, this is a live map, so this can change tomorrow. But in your local county that I'm looking at, 77449, 1,500 units sold in the last three months with 1.3 months of inventory. So should I be flipping here or should I be flipping in 77008 heights, 77007 heights, that the inventory is close to four months, even though the volume is pretty high? All right, the answer is right here. 77373, I don't know what that is. What a great place right now to be flipping a home or wholesaling my, my deals. Make sense? Spring right there, yeah. <clears throat> this is a great predictor of what's happening in the market space. And let's take a look at another thing just to give you an idea of what the off-market activity is. It's, it's off the roofs, man. Anybody and everybody telling you that the market is... Uh, that, and this is what I was telling you about the tons of opportunities coming in the foreclosure space. You will be waiting a long time. The right. incoming. There's no barrage of foreclosures coming. Check this out. In a local market, my friends, here is the off-market activity live as we are speaking. I'm hitting the local county databases, the MLS databases, the tax assessors. We are hitting the, the county assessors. We're hitting the district clerks. We're hitting the justice peace courts. This is live data in front of you. There are 100,000 properties right now on their way on a tax foreclosure. But check this out. There are only 12 properties listed for property tax sales. Wow. It's wild. There are, as of five minutes ago, there are 26,000, 27,000 people in loan modification. But there are 237 people listed for an actual foreclosure. Do you see the disparity? Do you see the difference? And if you believe that in the next few months, these numbers are going to significantly go up, you'll be waiting a long time. Yeah, Most take- homeowners have lost their motivation with six month, eight month, 12 month deferments and, and mortgage restructuring to be worried about, more, especially uh, trustee of mortgage foreclosures, their incoming. Your opportunity as a real estate investor lies, my friend, here, which is pre pre foreclosure, which is properties that are in a loan modification, structuring a subject to deal with them. And this is a, again, an advanced topic. If you right. have any interest and if you are, are a Real Act member, just click on the learn section. We have hours and hours and hours of videos, advanced videos that you can watch on how to do uh, uh, subject to investing. And of course, Gabe, I'm pretty sure you guys provide resources also. But that's where the opportunities really lie, my friend as a real estate single family investor, that's what you're planning on doing, not in being able to buy pre foreclosure deals, but in being able to do subject to deal restructuring, loan restructuring, loan modifications, loan assumption deals, bank notes, takeover notes, that's where the opportunities lies in the next few months, not in buying pre foreclosure, or definitely not the 21 day foreclosure notices. I think you were trying to say something, Gabe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for those who don't know, guys, this is huge. Uh, we can easily do that. Um, but 
connect, 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 connect. This is good information. And if you're not really grabbing it, ask a question and, or you can connect with this later, share this to somebody, you know, that might need something like this or someone who might get involved with real estate investing, who needs a resource like real act, but also just needs this information. We're seeing stuff right now, AG. I know I was talking to you the other day. Um, we got a property from last year to this year. I know that uh, we heard that uh, it was about an 8% in increase, right? In home values, 8% increase is huge in itself. I have a property right now that's at a 13% increase. Wow. Here to this year. Absolutely, man. And compare, and that, to, compare that to what people are seeing in the equity in the stocks market. People have seen uh, uh, stocks go up and then down and then up again. Like right now, people who are up in stocks, they're, they're shitting bricks because they don't know what's going to happen. There's no reason for stocks to be where they are right now. Not at all. Not at all. And so, I mean, when you see stuff like that, um, real estate's a great investment, guys. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to go out there. And, and, you know, AG was mentioning stuff for those who want to get involved in building generational wealth, because that's the topic of tonight. If you're looking at doing generational wealth, then, and, and you're starting off with single family and you wanted to advance out, Yes, totally with what AG is saying. If you just want to stick to single family and you want to collect as much as possible, you're going to need to change your strategy in the next phase of what we're doing here. So from here to the end of the year, your strategy has to be tweaked up a little bit um, because you see some of the stuff that's going out there. The market's super hot, especially in the Houston metro area. Um, I mean, we're seeing, so this house that, that I just, I sell. So it was a rental and, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to move on, right? Like you, you moved on to some of your properties. This house, man, um, we had 72 showings in 35 days. I remember you telling me when we were playing volleyball last week, yeah. Yeah, 72 showings, man. Crazy. <laughs> That's awesome, and man. So I'm just like, so I just waited. Like, you know, there, once what I- What price I, point is it at? Uh, it sold for 177. Yeah, that's it. That's that the sweet spot right there. You saw sweet. the median price, right? Of the median, the average price of homes in Texas. So if you, if I can get myself into a home, I'm assuming this is Houston, right? Right. Spring yeah. area. So, so Harris County, if I can get myself into a home for $170,000, of course they are. you have 70 showings. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So let's keep going, guys. If you have questions, hey, hit the like button as far as sharing it or liking the page or liking the group. So that way you could get more of this information. All right. So what do we have less? Where's the, this is it, man. This is it. I, I want to, I want to end with, with telling you where the real opportunities lie. And then we can open it up for questions or you guys can come over and we can go swimming. Uh, my pool is ready to, to jump in. I'm, <laughs> and my wife is waving at me for the past 20 minutes, but this is it, man. This is where the opportunities lie. You ready? Number one, guys, retail restructuring is happening right now under our noses. This is what big boys are doing. What does that mean? As big retail shops are running out of business, as big, in, as big, big malls are evaluating what needs to be done. There are industrial parks now opening up all over uh, Texas and all over big metro areas. In fact, uh, this is a combination. Uh, Walmart, Macy's, uh, and Amazon just moved into a major industrial park. I want to say it's 150,000 square. Is it square feet? That sounds too low. It's a ridiculously large industrial farm that they just moved into uh, just a few months ago by Port of Houston. So there's a tremendous amount of industrial park restructuring happening. What does that mean to you? What that means to you is that if you are a part of an investment club or investment group, keep your ears and eyes open for large parcels of land, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 square feet parcels uh, of land, because there are a lot of industrial brokers looking to broker these kinds of deals. So get involved, keep your ears and eyes open, and you can make millions of dollars in assignment fee or brokerages fee if you can get your hands on a good industrial park. Don't be afraid, don't be scared of reaching out to some of these large parcel owners. These, they are, they are giant. If you've ever driven around Houston, there are giant parking lots that are just retail parking lots that are just sitting there with absolutely nothing going on on them. So there's a tremendous amount of retail restructuring happening. Number two, high vacancy rates are about to hit us. 
Now, yes, unemployment is coming down, but dude, five to eight percent unemployment is still pretty da- a pretty darn high, man. What that means is that a lot of people, especially dealing in the sub twelve hundred dollars a month rent range, are going to start seeing an increased number of vacancies. This number of vacancies is gonna go up consistently, my prediction is, in apartment complexes. Already apartment complexes, uh, they they were joyously celebrating that they were seeing 90 plus percent of occupancies, record occupancies, but those rates are already starting to come down slowly, gradually. Again, people who have single family homes, especially small landlords, will get hit hard. In the next three or four months, if you're marketing, start channelizing your, effort, your efforts towards finding landlords that own less than 10 properties. I learned this from Eddie Gant years ago, where years upon years upon years, he has consistently marketed to people between three and 10 properties that own between three and 10 properties because more than less than three, they haven't experienced the joy of management yet. And more than 10, they've probably become institutional. They've probably organized their, their businesses much better than you know, uh, three to 10 guys have. But that's where the opportunities lie. The way we do it is we simply log into real acquisitions, choose the markets that are low inventory in rent. I showed you the map a few minutes ago of low inventory in, uh, uh, in, uh, um, in sales, but you can run similar maps of low inventory in rental areas. So we pick those low rental inventory areas and we simply download the owners that own multiple properties. And we reach out specifically to those people that own multiple properties in these markets. He's a great, great, great list to go after. Small landlords, that's the name of the game. If you're marketing, focus your marketing on these guys. In fact, the number of institutional mail that I'm receiving in the last few months is ridiculous. I've never seen the amount of mail that's coming to me about buying my portfolio from some of the big boys in the last few months. So this is where the name of the game is right now. Nice. But three, we talked about this. Retail is going to be hit hard. And that means there's a fast focus on e-commerce. Already we've seen crazy stock price increases in in e-commerce brands like Wayfair, like Amazon, like uh, uh, Etsy. I mean, it's crazy. I think uh, Wayfair reported a 40% increase in their revenue since March of this year. It's just ridiculous the way these guys are going up. What does that mean? Warehouses. For investors like you and me, position yourself, start getting into the warehouse business. There was a lot of talk about public storage and getting into small storage units. That's all fine and dandy. But I believe the next three to five years, the name of the game is going to be in storage units. If you are in in warehouses, if you can get yourself in markets and places or like what we are doing, we're not just waiting on buying warehouses. Strategically, we are finding locations where we can build large warehouses, 50 to 100,000 square foot of warehouse space is what we are looking at. So that's in, 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 in markets that are surrounded by residential areas. So that's why we believe the opportunities for residential, for, for warehousing is, is going to come. And last but not the least, I know everybody is talking about working from home, but this trend is going to decline slightly. Everybody cannot continue working from home forever. Like I know I'm at the end of my wits. I can't wait for, for me to get back into the office space in some capacity. We predict this is going to be the market for small satellite offices. Small satellite offices. What does that mean? That means that if you're looking at retail, small retail space, strip malls, you know, 15,000, 20,000, 25,000 square foot strip malls, re-equipping them as satellite office spaces. Re-equipping them as as satellite office spaces. That's going to be the next trend in the next three to five years. So again, keep your ears and eyes open. I know a lot of people in the strip uh, center business are gonna be hit by this, but if if you can get yourself into this space where you can provide small strip offices, uh, satellite offices, you're in for some very, very pleasant surprises. 
So these are my predictions, by guys. These when are, you say the offices, are you looking at stuff that's kind of like... Um, not like WeWork. Not like WeWork. Yeah, not like WeWork. But WeWork was too big to fail, right? I mean, they, and they failed. They, right. they, they fell on their face because they were providing co-office spaces. But imagine I am an Exxon Mobil, Mobil and I'd like, I have people working in Sugarland and I'd like to be able to provide them a, a 200 people office where they can simply come and people in the Sugarland or neighboring areas and simply come to work to a satellite office, a small satellite office in Sugarland. That's what I'm talking about. What do you think about the Airbnbs or the, the let's say, short-term rentals or stuff like that to have using houses as satellite offices? No, that's too small, man. Too small. That's too small. Okay. Way too small. Now, if you have a small apartment complex, if, if you can retrofit that, maybe. Yeah. One of the things, oh, you want to go on that? No, no, go ahead. All right. Hey, one of the things, guys, that I want to share is the fact that just the power of pivoting, right? So we need to pivot throughout this whole time. Everybody's pivoting. If you haven't pivoted fully yet, um, now, man. if you haven't, then yeah, do it. And uh, you might still be new. You still be, might be wondering what in the world am I supposed to be pivoting to? <laughs> all I've seen was HGTV. Like this is all I know. Um, so again, j- just to kind of go over, you know, wholesaling is great, guys. It's, it's good to, to get you into the market to understand what's going on. Um, again, you have AG services. We got vendors that, that do different things. Um, it's good to know so that way you know how to structure a deal so you can negotiate. Um, nowadays, I think that uh, real estate investing is actually way bigger and way deeper than what it was 10, 15 years ago. There's so many facets of it. Um, the same things were going on way back when, but it just seems like from whenever I got started in it, there's a lot of other moving parts. So you got to make some good decisions. So, and this is kind of like my, my plug into the next move of what we do also. Uh, if you're going to do wholesaling of any sort and you're looking at marketing for properties, you got to understand that it's a marketing company. It's not a real estate company. You're actually doing marketing and advertising and looking for sellers and learning how to negotiate deals and lock them down and do all those things. It's not till you actually start purchasing these things and you try to you kind of transfer over to a real estate investment company. Those things is where you want to look at that long-term wealth, the generational stuff that AG is talking about. I know just by what AG is saying, my mind is going a million miles. I'll probably have another conversation with AG of going, okay, man, I got some other ideas. Let's knock them off the board. Let's put some new ones on the board and let's advance forward. Uh, because that's what you have to do as a real estate investor. So just a quick tip, if you're looking to move in that direction already, why not start marketing in that direction? And so one of the things I've seen the most, AG, is that people market towards something that they're not really interested in because that's kind of where the fast cash is and they want to move in that, not knowing that that's a whole nother rabbit hole. That's a lot of training, education, learning you have to do to get in that area. And they really want to go into a whole different area. You know, they want to go into something that's more commercial or more industrial. And there's plenty of tools out there nowadays for you to start looking into that now. Yep. Right. And, you know, so, not, not, to, not to hijack your, your, your point, but that's the exact reason why we launched the marketing CRM game. Because we realized that most people go through this crazy onboarding in kicking off the marketing. I mean, getting a list, cleaning that list, uploading the list, skip tracing that list then buying subscription to a texting platform, an RVM platform, a direct mail platform, like it's crazy. And now I can challenge any and everybody. I don't care how <laughs> new you are. If you are new, brand new five minutes in five minutes from getting a super potent list to cleaning that list, to skip tracing that list, to creating that marketing campaign and getting your message in the hands of the actual distress seller, in under five minutes, we can show you on the Real Acquisitions marketing platform. That's why we're so proud of uh, what uh, what's going on here. Uh, did I lose my screen? Yeah, your screen popped off, but it's just, it's just you and me now. Oh, okay. Just, there you go. 
Yeah. But I, I, I appreciate everybody logging in. I want to sh- share some photos of some, uh, uh, some of the Real Acquisitions family members. These are folks uh, uh, who you know, faces of, of thousands of investors that have used Real Acquisitions over the course of the last 10 years. And we can't, can't wait you and your audience uh, Gabe, to to join us in our family and you know work alongside us. We really value the relationship that we have with the Houston and in general in Dallas, San Antonio, Texas-based investors. And I'll end with this: is that I read this quote many many years ago, where uh, if you meet a skeptic, and there's so many skeptics that you'll meet, they always live in the land of this is what happened, this is what I did. And I, 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 and that's not necessarily a bad thing because, you know, you should learn from your, from your experiences. But the reality is that most people who are never willing to learn from their past, but make it a, a reason to excuse, make it an excuse to not go forward. That's the reason they're so skeptical. Have you met those people at your event where they come and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this because this happened to me. Or, oh my gosh, I can't buy this property because I bought this property in 1979 at at a 50 cents in the dollar. They live in the past. They are not willing to learn and see what's happening in the future, what's happening in the space now. And that's where the people, the successful people live. They learn from the past, but they're not slaves of their past. Good decisions, bad decisions, good things that happen to them, bad things that happen to them. They are not slaves to those things. They're always forward looking. They're always looking at what's about to happen. So I, I encourage everybody to start your real acquisitions access if you've not done that already. 182,000 leads that we're adding all on a daily basis. You have full 100% MLS access. And now, of course, you have full on 100% marketing CRM. So visit realacquisitions.com uh, uh, and, and get your account created. You can email us at help at realacquisitions.com or you can send a text or call us at 855-732-5328. And anybody who has any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be delighted to do that. If you email us at help at realacquisitions.com asking for a copy of the presentation, you'll automatically get a response with a copy of this entire presentation that I just did. So just email help at realacquisitions.com and you'll get a, a copy of the presentation and we'll be delighted to do that to you. But I, again, I appreciate Gabe, man, uh, letting, letting me jibber jabber for the last one hour and talking to your audience. I really enjoyed it, man. Yeah, for sure. Let's, uh, let, let me do a, a screen. Let me split this up real quick. Go ahead and stop that. I got some other questions. I want to get us. There we go. All right. So we have some cool stuff, man. We're not done yet. We, what? St- <laughs> we're not done yet, man. You can, you're going to go swimming in a little bit. Tell your wife to hold on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So here we go. All right. So uh, we had somebody. So Frank was saying, hey, uh, explain to us, because I kind of have this question, too, because I was thinking the same thing as the foreclosure thing. And I think everybody was kind of thinking the moment stuff started tanking in March, April, they're like, wait a minute. We've seen this last time. And uh, the only thing that I'm really taking away from. Well, there's many things, but the biggest thing I'm taking away into this next season is it's nothing like the last time. Right. And so if you if you want to do that, and so I know so many folks that that are uh, that come to our networking event also are saying, hey, look, um, get ready, Gabe, or, or they'll say, hey, this is what I did, or I used to buy stuff in the auction, and I do this other stuff. The technology has changed so much that um, I mean, they're doing evictions online on Zoom calls. Right. So, I mean, they're not you're not showing up to court to do majority of this stuff. Uh, so my personal thought is even that the stuff that does get to auction, because it's probably going to be online to some degree, there's going to be so many people looking at that. You know, back in the days there used to be AG, you can go to an auction and you can look at a property and you could go, oh man, no one showed up today. (laughs) And you could find a really good deal. Like, you know, the people that I thought were going to come after it, they're not coming after this thing and you're finding a good deal. Those days are long gone. I haven't. I don't know how you, long you've been around, man. But I, I've been going to these auctions since 2009. And I have not seen a single freaking deal since 2012. Wow. I haven't. 
I'm in Montgomery County, so we see deals up here. Not anymore. I mean, once I started seeing people fight over crazy stuff, uh, I stopped going. But that's the point that I'm making, though, guys, is that those foreclosures, they're not going to go online, right? And they're going to be multiple people from all over. Well, so there's another perspective, right? So the point is not necessarily what's going to happen to the regular volume. Will the regular volume drop? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I, my personal prediction is that it will drop. So I'll give you an example. The, the county that's infamous for tax foreclosures is Harris, right? Harris by far does the highest number of property tax foreclosures than any other county. Uh, Harris sees give or take about 400 property tax foreclosures a month. Tax sales is what they call it, right? Uh, similarly, we see anywhere from 12 to 1800 mortgage or trustee foreclosures on a monthly basis. Uh, I do believe that volume obviously is nothing right now because there's a moratorium and all kinds of things. Right. But the reality is that people are saying or thinking in these circles where this volume itself will go up. So my point of contention is no, it won't. Because A, the market, the, the feds and the entire, the entire banking industry learned their lesson in 2008, 2009, that they're not going to flood the market with tax or with property sales, number one. Number two, what also happened in 2008 is that there was a many, many banks that allegedly never really released their properties to a foreclosure. They essentially became REOs and institutional investors came and bought these troves and troves of what they used to call as tapes. You know, they would buy the, these, these thousand property tape of REO properties. That also is not going to happen simply because for the first time, there are 12 month uh, extensions or moratoriums and yeah. loan uh, modifications in place. There is no motivation for a homeowner at this point at all right now to say, you know what? They're not accruing any penalties. It's not hitting their credit. The banks are saying, if you can't pay, it's as simple as making a phone call. It's no documentation, right? They, you call your bank and say, hey man, I've been affected by COVID. The bank is not going to ask you a question. It's like, no problem, sir. We'll give you a 30 day, a 33 month extension. After three months, Simply call us if you can't make, we'll give you another 30, another 90 days. If you can't make that, we'll give you another six months. Uh, by the way, it will not impact your credit. By the way, it'll, you'll not accrue any penalties. And at the end of 12 months, you're not required to make catch up payments. All you have to do is we'll attach these 12 months of payment at the end of your loan as a second lien or as a balloon or or as a, as a or we can give you a catch up schedule if you want, or we can modify your entire loan. Psst. Who's, where's the motivation of the homeowner who already was in financial trouble? Why would he go out and get himself into a rental position? Why would he, why would he take that money that now he's saving and spend money on rent or, or buying a sec, uh, or getting himself into another housing position? There is zero motivation. That's why there's absolutely no mortgage foreclosure barrage coming. The only opportunity that you guys have right now as a real estate investor is to reach to that guy and say, listen, you may not want to do a deal now, but the same position that you're in right now, you're going to be in six months, seven months, eight months from now. How about we structure a deal where you let me do a loan, where you let me do a subject to deal where I can take over your payments and I can offer you all kinds of options. You can continue leasing from me. You can continue living here. We can do a, a lease option eight months, nine months later when this thing expires and now you have to catch up because then you still have to start making payments. At that time, we can go ahead and execute the deal. This is the time to position yourself. But this Absolutely. is not the time at all to be able to expecting uh, some troves and troves of troves of foreclosures to come. Absolutely. And you know what? Um, I started seeing this uh, in January, February. So I started changing what we do. Um, you could ask our team, you know, some of our team, like we started. And so what, the, what we did was keep our ears to the ground, keep your ears to the ground, keep your ears to the ground. Once you do that, you figure out, okay, this is going to happen. Boom. COVID happens. So we were kind of already prepared, but I suspect the same thing, guys, if you don't know somebody, so we help people with subject twos, we help people with doing creative financing. Um, we help other investors, no creative financing, no subject twos. If you're on here right now and you want to know more, uh, just message me, DM me. I'll be able to help you out a little further. Um, 
If you want really, really in-depth stuff, AG has stuff on his stuff. I also go to Grant Kemp. If you know Grant Kemp with Creative Finance. Great guy, man. Grant's a great guy. Yeah, great guy. He uh, He's one of my guys. So uh, creativecashflow.com. Creativecashflow.com is Grant Kemp's group. Um, I find out tons of stuff from him because he's he's just one of my guys. I go to him for for him. And he has a sexy hairstyle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 almost there. I'm almost there. Almost, man. Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, man, the same thing. So I have a feeling, dude, that we're gonna start seeing people like wholesalers. It's not gonna be no more, it's gonna be, hey, this is your flip, this is gonna be your rental price. It's gonna be more of flip rental is gonna be kind of on the bottom sub two deal is going to be on the top. We're going to see creative type deals coming up because there's really only like well, people are doing flips right now because the market's so hot and things are amazing. But we're also leaving out this other side of people. And the, these are the ones that you're talking about. And this is where some of the money's been made. I've known countless people. We just had a conversation the other day with this lady. Uh, she was talking about how she made her wealth on commercial buildings by sub twos by owner financing, by creative financing. And so she had no money in a lot of these deals. She would build up the property. She would, she would make the tenant for this big asset, meaning she would build the company. And then at the end of the day, the company stays in there and they just go ahead and sell everything. They sell the company. And so this stuff is real guys, but that's really how the wealth is made over time. So if you want to talk about the option thing, right, of that guy who was in the Bel Air area, or was it, was it Bel Air? Uh, the the eight blocks in every direction. This is the next best thing, guys, is to really start taking over properties while other people already have these things in place. Awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome yeah. stuff, uh, but good hey, stuff. Guys, Any more questions? That is all on the questions. Let me see. I think there's a couple things. Hey, shout out to Mike, Ralph, Frank, uh, Eric. Thanks a lot, guys, for sharing and for uh, just talking on here and asking questions. I think we have everything wrapped up guys. Again, if you want more information, get a hold of AG. You could DM him while he's on here, or you could go to realacquisitions.com and uh, connect with them on there. And that's it guys. So uh, what's next? Lou, is that it? Uh, yes, I think so. That's it guys. Again, want to say, if you want to connect with us, if you want to just um, like our page, We'll be able to connect with you on there. DM me. And if you need some help in real estate investing and just need some direction of where to go, I'll be happy to answer some questions on uh, Facebook, whatever, Messenger, whatever you need. All right. That's it. AG, thank you so much. You can enjoy the pool now. Too late, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Over and out. Thanks for having me, having me on your show, man. And look forward to you guys pretty soon. Over and out.